Ag people are your first environmentalists. Farmers understand we've got to take care of the land. We've got to be good stewards of the land because this land is what takes care of us and it's our livelihood. He uh, is a very good environmental steward of the land. Most farmers are, but Marlin is exceptionally good at it. It's important to him. Nobody cares more about the land than farmers. That's what we make our living on, and we don't want to see that destroyed. We just need to take care of what God gave us. In 2006, third-generation farmer Marlon Pendergrass left Sand Mountain of northern Alabama for the fertile lands of south-central Florida. Together with his wife Donna and son Jake, Marlon journeyed south to join his uncle Carlos Bailey, who was growing citrus at the family's newest farm, the Groves of Peace River. Citrus has been a part of Florida agriculture for years and an integral part because so many people uh, actually live off of working the citrus groves and not only the transportation, the labor, the people that grow the citrus, but it's a diverse agricultural industry and this is an integral part of it. Located near Zolfo Springs, the Groves of Peace River cultivates a diverse variety of fruit on its 860 acres, including oranges, limes, grapefruit, and tangerines. What began as an opportunity in the family business has grown into an unmistakable passion for Florida citrus. But where opportunity is found, challenges also exist. Currently, uh, citrus farmers in Florida are facing a variety of different challenges. Uh, anywhere from greening water issues, fertilizer costs, production costs per acre, across the board, you know, that would include pesticide, uh, labor, everything that you can see within a grove operation is doubled in cost. You see it? Since I've been growing citrus, greening has been the number one challenge, which is the Hong Long Bing virus, and it uh, has been a tremendous challenge. Transmitted by the Asian citrus psyllid, the bacterial infection known as citrus greening has led to unprecedented crop losses. This disease is by far the largest threat faced by Florida's citrus farmers and has had a profound effect on the entire industry. Well, we learned very quick that you couldn't control psyllids by frequent sprays. So uh, we try to mitigate the effects of the disease through helping the tree nutritionally as opposed to fighting a bug that you can't kill. Every grove is different, so you've got to develop a program that's going to work on your acreage. And there's no better way than, than being like Mr. Marlin and out there walking his groves and, and looking at the trees. Scientists, engineers, and growers across Florida are experimenting with measures to control the spread of the greening disease. While pesticides may still be necessary, IPCs, or Individual Protective Covers, help keep the deadly psyllid off the young trees and minimizes the need for chemical treatments. IPCs are for the protection of young trees that we just planted. It's a white sheet that goes over the tree. That protects that tree from uh, HLB. Air, uh, water is still able to go back and forth from it, but the psyllid cannot get into the cover. So if we can give the tree a better head start by putting those IPCs over, gives it a better root system and gives it a better head start and might be able to outpace greening a little bit to get that tree up into production. If you don't protect them when they're young, you're certainly not going to have them when they're old. Encompassing the groves are a series of ditches, drain tiles, and control structures that allow Marlin to control the flow of water. By retaining water in the ditches, he can maintain soil moisture levels and lower irrigation needs, while grasses absorb any excess nutrients. When I first came to uh, Florida 16 years ago, we have a, a drainage system in our grove that was open, and uh, there's no way to control the water coming through the groves. 
I took it up on myself to install control structures that we can back up the water and, and hold any nutrients in the grove until uh, the release is necessary or if it's real dry we can back the water up and uh, supplement our irrigation through the retention of water. Most of our water goes into Charlie Creek which runs into the Peace River and which runs into Charlotte Harbor. So we want to make sure that water is as clean as possible when we're releasing it. I love to fish and I don't want to see our estuaries hurt at all so we, we, we want to make sure that all of our water is safe. Precision agriculture helps operations save time, labor, and money. For its part, the Groves of Peace River utilizes a total grid that allows for the accurate location of its trees inside organized blocks. Used in tandem with the total grid, the Seeing Eye is a hybrid GPS-based and sensor-enabled system that recognizes its location inside the total grid and allows for precise, information-based application of inputs using the right source and the right rate at the right time and in the right place. Our groves are uh, split up into different blocks and each one of those grids receives something a little bit different. Sometimes we need to water that grid more, sometimes we need to water it less. We need to fertilize that one more, fertilize it less. Same goes for our pesticide applications, also for herbicide as well. When you're doing your grid sampling, you're doing them all by blocks. And he's also set up that he's irrigating by blocks. But the, the key part is, is making sure that you're getting the nutrients that you need to feed that tree and only those nutrients that you need. I mean, there again, I go back. Every time that farmer or grower fertilizes, that's his profit coming out of his pocket. Knowing that irrigation management is a key to nutrient management, Marlin has soil moisture probes installed throughout the groves that provide detailed, real-time information. Accessed via computer or mobile application, this data is used to identify when and where to irrigate and can help prevent overwatering. The biggest advantage of the microjets is you're putting the water right there in the, in the root zones of the trees. And then also as technology has come along, they're injecting their fertilizer through their irrigation system. So you know those nutrients are being put right there in that root base. By using controlled release fertilizers, Marlin has been able to minimize his nutrient applications while maximizing uptake. Designed to disperse into the soil over time, controlled release fertilizers provide a slow and steady flow of nutrients and minimize potential leaching from the soil. One of the things a lot of the citrus growers have seen is they're getting better utilization of their nutrients and more are being absorbed by the tree. Also, it's spoon feeding it in one term. It's feeding it a little bit of loam every day or every few days as it kind of slowly breaks down. So I think there's a big added benefit to the environment there. To supplement his use of conventional fertilizers, Marlin spreads additional amendments beneath the trees in the form of organic compost. He's putting that organic material back in to the soil. That helps feed the microbes, which we turn around and we get a healthier soil. It helps hold moisture, and if you're holding the moisture, you're also holding your nutrients. And that's a key factor right there is, is keeping your nutrients in that root zone. We're in good shape as far as our com composition of our soil. And you can tell by the weeds sometimes that we have that the soil is rich. It will grow. Neighboring the planted citrus are natural wooded areas and wetlands. As a good steward, Marlin leaves these as natural buffers, providing habitat for the wildlife, while also helping to hold and filter water before it reaches the aquifer. As you ride around Mr. Marlin's Grove and you see the thriving wetlands, you see the wildlife all throughout his groves, I think you see that there's that balance of agriculture and wildlife and the environment all working together and each one of them are thriving. Marlin's farming practices are built around long term taking care of the soil, taking care of the trees, and taking care of the environment.
like most of us, he comes from a farm background and uh, we understand the importance of taking care of the land, leaving it better than it was. If we didn't care, we wouldn't be here because f farming is not uh, the most profitable thing to ever be in. It's just a way of life for a lot of us and we want to continue doing that and pass it on to our kids later on down the road from generation to generation. The land is, I think, one of the greatest assets that God had created. And it is natural for me and the people I work with to try to do the best to be good stewards of what we do.